Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. Happy Monday. Let's get into our Today in History. Today in History, May 18th, 1917. Some six weeks after the United States formally entered the First World War, the U.S. Congress passes the Selective Service Act, giving the U.S. President the power to draft soldiers. All right, so this is the start of when we see the draft happening during war. Um, in the past, it was never really an issue, right? The United States hadn't been involved in a war of this capacity, and um, even to that point, you had people that were voluntarily joining the military, um, that we always had enough manpower, but then come World War One, because of the sheer size of the conflict, the United States needs to draft citizens to serve in the war. Okay. Um, something that we've talked about when we did World War One and World War Two, so it shouldn't be anything that's too foreign to you guys, but I thought it was cool to talk about, like, this is the day that the bill actually passed. All right. Um, before we get into our lesson, we do have a birthday today. And it disappeared. Okay, there it is. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Alex Vasquez. Sweetheart, I hope you have an amazing day. I hope it's beautiful and you get everything that you wanted. All right, so happy birthday. All right. Um, on Friday, you guys had a lesson about the space race, which hopefully you enjoyed because it is by far my favorite part of the Cold War. I think it's so incredibly interesting. Um, the fact that we're able to launch people off of our planet into outer space and then uh, have the ability to travel throughout space and explore other planets, I think is crazy. Um, I think a lot of time we don't think of how amazing that is. So during your space race uh, lesson, it, you learned a little bit about how does that happen, right? Where um, does space exploration really get its kickstart? Um, of course, it was before the Cold War, it was something that people had spoken about, but really it's that competition between the United States and the Soviet Union that propels it forward as quickly as it does. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. So you guys learned all about Sputnik, you learned about Yuri Gagarin, and then you learned about the Apollo 11 mission. And then uh, down here at the bottom, I gave you some highlights of things that I thought were important and interesting. Uh, so if you enjoy the space race, space race as much as I do, right, you can go out and you can check some stuff out or get in touch with me and I'll find some pretty cool stuff for you. Uh, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of information out there about it. And of course, it holds a special place in my heart because my boy JFK was a big push behind uh, NASA and space exploration. So it's pretty cool stuff. All right, um, moving forward, we are going to be talking about how the Cold War affects the United States on the home front. Right? We've done this in the past with every um, war that we've talked talked about, uh, World War One and World War Two, where we've spoken about uh, victory gardens and liberty bonds and the draft, right, um, and rationing and all things that citizens did at home in order to support the war effort. Right? The Cold War is going to be a little different in that you don't need those things from citizens because this isn't a hot war, there's no fighting taking place, uh, nothing like that, but there are going to be certain things that citizens do on the home front as precaution uh, because that threat of nuclear war is so prevalent during this time period, right? It's something that people were really, really afraid was going to happen because it was a true possibility that at any point the U.S. or the Soviet Union could launch nuclear missiles at one another. Right. Um, so you are going to use the sources and a video in order to answer the questions in this graphic organizer. I put them first because I think it's nice to at least kind of have an idea of what you're going to be looking for. All right, so you're going to read this fake letter here right, about uh, nuclear fallout drill preparation. Uh, and then you are going to read about what are known as duck and cover drills, right? That's part of that nuclear fallout prep, right? Uh, it'll tell you a little bit about how they got started and what exactly they were. And then you're going to watch this video here. Uh, it is a clip from an actual uh, film that was put out 
during the 1950s uh, that was shown to school-age children. So if you guys were alive and in school during the Cold War, this is something that you would have watched. Right? Duck and cover drills were practiced similar to the way we do um, like our lockdown drills or our fire drills where it was just something that kids needed to know how to do. Right, And it was often that these drills would take place. So you're going to watch that video and see exactly what a duck and cover drill is and what was expected of the children. Uh, and then you are going to read all about bomb shelters. Your bomb shelters are going to be something that was pretty commonplace uh, during this time period because people were so afraid that nuclear war was a possibility. A lot of people were preparing for that reality uh, and a good amount of people installed bomb shelters in their backyards underground uh, and prepped for the possibility of nuclear war. So you're going to read a little bit about that as well. All very um, interesting stuff. And if any of you find any interest in this bomb shelter, right, this prep for nuclear war, I would encourage you. It's on Netflix. It's called Doomsday Preppers. It is all about people who create these sort of bomb shelters or have plans in case there is some sort of nuclear fallout, economic crash, things like that, that you do have people modern day that are still doing stuff like this. It's pretty crazy. So very interesting. Okay. Uh, so that is everything. And then something a little different that you're going to notice, I'm trying something new, is that I've seen these all over the place, um, these like little virtual classrooms. So of course, you know, I had to jump on this train and make one. So this is what I'm going to put out with every lesson. Right? Um, you'll have our little virtual classroom in here, any birthdays I'll post up here on the side. So, you know, it's posted like in class. I have of course, my, my man JFK over here. You have information about our office hours, when they are, right, and the code to join. And then I'll always put the aim for the lesson up here. And then I'm going to link the, this instru instructional video in here every time, uh, just so that you guys can access it like this. And it's something a little different and creative. And look at that, you can see my little bitmoji. And she's been like, hey guys, look it, check it out. Look, see? We look exactly alike. I know. It's crazy. Uh, but that is everything. Right? Uh, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to me. I hope you have an amazing day, of course. And as always, stay safe and make good choices. Bye, guys.